and preparations to undertaking the mass enrollment and the renewal exercise of the national identification cards. It was supposed to be 2023 and you're looking to a batch of about 15.8 million national IDs that have to be renewed. Uh, that's printing and issuing. Now, of course, you look at the first initial exercise that we had on a national level, which was back in 2014, 2015. Those cards are uh, about to expire. So by end of 2025, all cards that were issued out between 2014 and 2015 will be officially expired. And therefore, there is need for the renewal of national identity cards. We do have um, the head of NIRA joining us as the executive director, Rosemary Chisembo, to help us unearth exactly this process and the many questions that you've been having as to what it really is expiring is it the name or the card good morning to you madam Tsembo. good morning ma'am it's a pleasure to have you and uh, now we want to first interrogate the process um, of national identity cards i know that you have been before committees in parliament in most recent times uh, defending the budget but let's to go back to the process um when budgeting cycle so i believe that on the side of nira you went through the budgeting cycle and you made your intentions clear for the next financial year one of them being renewal of na um, national cards when it comes to that you got approved approval from parliament from cabinet from cabinet mm. okay and then the funding was supposed to align itself accordingly in in february 2021 the board of nira approved the concept paper for the mass enrollment exercise mm -hmm. subsequently it went through different protocols and in august 2022 cabinet approved the mass enrollment exercise and renewal As you note, August is just before the beginning of the first budget circular call, which happens in September of each year. Mm -hmm. We presented our budget, but government by its nature has ceilings per year. Uh, we, were to we were submitted to the ceiling for the institution, 59 billion. And uh, we, however, made the case that look, there is a project that is catered for under the NDP3. It actually fulfills seven projects under the NDP3 that has not been funded. We went before Pacodia, which is our parliamentary. We made our case. There was even a brief debate where people discussed Mulbawa on the floor of parliament, what's 117 billion versus but somehow after that, the talk disappeared and money was not appropriated mm -hmm. for that. So we, uh, there, are on, there are ongoing engagements with the Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. and all parties involved because the budget for the 2023-24 was read on June 15th. So government is looking at how it can address our need. I don't want to get into the technicalities of finance because I may bite my tongue. Okay. There's a process for that, and that process is on track. It's just that, according to the roadmap that was approved by the board at that time, we were supposed to start in August 2023 with a full exercise, having had a pilot in June 2023. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the cause for alarm is coming from that we are two months or so behind schedule. Okay, yeah. all right. Now you speak of the roadmap and I know that in this roadmap equally, um, there should have been sensitization of uh, Ugandans to prepare them uh, for that exercise to take place. Did that uh, sensitization process, was it well received by Ugandans? Or did they raise so many questions as have been raised in the most recent days? Well, it's cultural in this country to raise questions, okay. and it's okay, uh, because we are supposed to answer them. So the process for sensitization has been going on for about one and a half years. Mm -hmm. I have severally made news for, I don't know, saying that it is going to be paid for, there's a story on DNA. I mean, there's been so many stories. And we got to a point of actually putting on our website frequently asked questions about mass enrollment. But we've had district engagements. I had a, an engagement in um, 
Moroto, mm -hmm. last about three months or four months ago, different people have had different engagements across the country. We've engaged even, even parliamentarians at our grounds mm -hmm. on this topic, severally. We've engaged several stakeholders, like National Council for the Disabled, different stakeholders or persons who have a unique um, uh, stake in our um, in our in this exercise of this national exercise we've engaged them severally and the stakeholder engagement continues because uh, still out of culture we prefer rumors to fact mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll, I'll start with one of the most commonly biggest misconstrues of this exercise and I'll read specifically from the law okay section 69 Subsection 6 of the Registration of Persons Act says, For the avoidance of doubt, expiry of a national identification card does not amount to expiry of the citizenship of people. Yeah, people have been asking, is it me who's the It's expiry? in the Act. <laughs> Do it's I move to Kenya after this? <laughs> it's in the Act. Yeah, yeah. It's in the Act. Okay. So... I would love it if we used our platforms, okay, to promote the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's to in the act. And the law the says, law. Okay. for avoidance of doubt, it's emphatic, mm -hmm. for avoidance of doubt, expiry of a national identification card does not amount to expiry of citizenship. It's written. This was 2015. Speaking of which, the other question that has uh, caused people to, you know, go overhead is the question of what exactly is expiring? The card, the quality of the card, um, the technology in the card, or the NIN itself? The NIN does not expire. Okay. Because the NIN is a number that you are located in our national identification register mm -hmm. think about it manual this is a big book of course ours is an electronic database but think about that big book where they would give you your school number the number you entered with in some school is the number you would keep up to the end mm -hmm. so the number that you enter into the register of citizens in Uganda is the number that you keep up to death mm -hmm. it is only expired at death or retired, maybe not means the word expired. It is retired at death. death. And why I'm emphasizing a retired and not expired, we will not issue it to another person. Because if we expired it, it means we'd issue it to, potentially issue mm -hmm. to it. So you keep your number throughout your life. Um, yeah, so in essence, it's the card has security features. I want you to think about the security features, like the security features of money. It's a laser printed card. It has micro text, it has tactile, it has several, about nine or ten features of security. With use, these degenerate mm -hmm. on the physical card. And after ten years, they become difficult to read or use, one. Two, the physical features embedded in the photograph that stands in the card expire. Let me use my word carefully. They, they degenerate, they deteriorate. Mm. I'm sure 10 years ago you looked different from what you look like today. Mm -hmm. But also in the card, we have your fingerprint in the backward. So with time, some people's fingerprints deteriorate. Now, because the card is an identification document, we, we want to keep it as close as possible to what you are now. And that's the reason there is that renew exercise. Okay. The other frequent question has been, Instead of five years, why not give it the consideration of 10 years as it is to, you know, the passports? It's 10 years. Mm -hmm. The card is 10 years. So, 
So we're going to be having this exercise every 10 years. No, no. And, and that's where I want to go to the history. Okay. In 2014, when this exercise started, it started with people who were 16 years and above. Now, you notice that there, there's, a f there's a fair amount of our population who's below that. Actually, we are one of the youngest populations mm -hmm. in the world. So that population was not handled at the 2014, 2015. There was an intervention in 2017, what they called the Learners Project. Yeah. But it also started from the age of seven up to people who were in a six. So in essence, in 2015 when NIRA was formed, the function of birth registration was moved from URSB to NIRA. Mm -hmm. The act says that within 30 days of a child being born, they, are, they must be registered and allocated a name. So in essence, the interventions that government is taking not, are not just stopping at the mass enrollment exercise. They also include the strengthening birth registration. Because when they strengthen birth registration, the children will come registered all the way. So in essence, we are, the, there was a need in 2014-15, and kudos to Uganda. Until that time, we were the highest registered population in East Africa. People like to tell us of Kenya, but they did not have a single identifier. Even to date, the 60.2% population that is identified with a single identifier is Uganda. The other third, Huduma number, Huduma, they had another one, they had several. But the unified single national identification register was pioneered by Uganda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now that you've mentioned the consideration of the full population, what does that roadmap look like uh, right from zero years to the oldest Ugandan that has to be registered in the next process? In the last uh, one and a half years, we have driven a course that, from a communication perspective, that emphasizes register your child before one year. The organization has injected itself into the uh, MDD primary school. We have had children uh, write the most beautiful poems, write the most beautiful creations. I would interest the media in that, mm -hmm. to, say, to train right from down. So six million children in the last two years have been, had the message of register your child. Why children? Because they speak to their parents. When a child comes and says, mommy, this is done, Somehow the parent may hear it louder than Nira saying it. Then also, they are tomorrow's mothers. We have a very young mother. So we wanted to inculcate this knowledge right early. Mm -hmm. There have been efforts and interventions with the Ministry of Health, deployments in health centers across the country to notify and register as children are being born. So in essence, there are interventions within, of course, the financial uh, capacity that the organization has to register births and also register uh, to, to promote. And that song will not stop. I want also to take this opportunity mm -hmm. and say as soon as your child is born, before their first year, register them. Because a lot of facts are lost in that year, given the fact that we have a very high productivity rate. So people you f you have the next child maybe next year you'll forget this one was oh yeah one November and we're October you just know when I go there no Madam Chisembul this day and era where parents advertise their children on social media please <laughs> can't I am in Nira <laughs> and every day someone comes to tell me how they forgot the year mm -hmm. in which their child was, was born. born it's a living reality social media is not a library tomorrow someone cleans it off okay it's a platform we don't own okay. Yeah. All right. Now let's go back to the budgeting. How mm -hmm. much money is required for you to have a smooth process? And so far in this current financial year, have you had any disbursement towards that? And what can it do for you just to offset the process? Well, 
The budget that was approved by cabinet was 666, 850 million, 666 billion, 850 million, 858,000. Okay. 666, 858, eight, sorry, 850, 858, Of that, 236 billion is for the system. And Ugandans are like, what is it going to do? When you say the system, that's the nearer system itself yes. needing up debt to yes. be able to cater uh, for this There's going to be a total overhaul of the technology. Of the technology. Okay. And I'll start with the kits. People come for enrollment. The kit is like a TV right now. When someone steps or you're passing and it moves, but it goes off. And the process starts again. Okay. We had four machines that with four laser printing machines that no lo only one is currently working. Mm -hmm. the, the, okay, the breakdown rate is too high in the tenure. They were started at 25,000 cards or whatever a day. That has deteriorated significantly. So in essence, we are kits. I, I'll start with the kits. A kit is going to cost us 20 million. Mm -hmm. It has a laptop. It has a signature pad. It has a document scanner. It has a fingerprint reader. It has an iris scanner. It has uh, a, an additional battery pack. Mm -hmm. In some cases, it will have a solar panel. So in essence, that is expected. Ex ex uh, uh, projected at 20. So if you buy 20 to 24 million, if you buy 5,500 of those, you are already at 110 to 116 billion of the system budget. Okay. Before we, then the same budget has, we need to buy the laser jet printing machines. Then away from the system budget, we have 183 billion mm -hmm. for 24 million cards. If you read the roadmap for the election, it says approximately 24 million people. So we are going to purchase 24 million cards, and the budget is 183 billion. Okay. If I if you can you can divide 183 billion by 24 million to find out if the, the rate is bit the cost is between seven to ten thousand shillings for the card okay all right so are we going to be incurring that cost or is no, government no, no. going to be kind enough government is incurring that cost okay for the first time card for the one that we are going to all get but in case you get it today and tomorrow you lose it mm -hmm. you will pay all right even if you lose it the very next day while we are still in the exercise mm -hmm. if we have given you one the second one you'll pay for okay. it. And the second one will cost a Ugandan how much? It's the usual price that we charge even today. It will be 50,000 shillings. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Now, in the regard of the exercise, one of the things that is best advocated for is uh, decentralization of processes. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to NERA, how do you intend to decentralize the process that someone doesn't have to take a bus all the way from the north of the country to come to the central place to get a national ID or a renewal or to just make the process easy for the Ugandans? <laughs> Ugandans need to appreciate their government 2014-15 this service came to parish level it is still coming back to parish level okay it is still coming back to parish, parish level, level. Mm -hmm. parish has been appointed by government as the unit for delivery of services so the model that we will take is we will deploy in a parish for three to four days will set up with a minimum of 10 computers. Computers per district will be divided based on the population. So we will set up a minimum of 10, and within each parish, we shall have four zones. Okay. Zone A will be for the disabled, pregnant mothers and children. Zone B will be for, mass, for those who are enrolling for the first time. There will be B1, B1 will be for those who have done pre-registration. Because this time, we have an online platform for you to capture your biodata. B2 will be for those who are taking finger, I mean for 
those who, are, who don't have access to computers, because I don't want that to be the next debate. So if you don't have access to computers, you don't have a phone, you don't have internet, you will be Kitted. addressed in B2. Okay. C1 will be for those who are renewing, but have done biodata capture online. C2 will be for those who are renewing, but have not done biodata capture. D will be for issuance. Then there will be an information desk that will be manned by LC people and uh, DSOs and GSOs for, because we are dealing with citizenship, for identifying persons who are potentially non-citizens mm -hmm. who are coming to, 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 to take advantage of this pro process. Okay. Now, we do have the, the business-minded people who are thinking, how do I tap into this opportunity? Because for such a mass uh, program uh, on a national level, it requires you mass deployment. Yes. And so that means that you're going to be employing people to be able to carry out that exercise as smoothly as possibly can be. How can a Ugandan who's you know, looking to tap into that money get into the process to help NIRA exercise its duties to them? Well... Um, there are a couple of opportunities. The first is for the, in each district, registration will be done by persons from that district. So the district will select who are the persons doing the enrollment mm -hmm. and persons who are super, what we've called sub-county supervisors. So that is the first opportunity. Go and hone your computer skills and uh, acquaint yourself with our law. And at the right time, when we come for recruitment, we shall ask you aspects about our law, and we shall also ask you if you can use a computer. Mm -hmm. We shall test you on if you can use a computer. That is the first opportunity. Okay. But when people gather, there will be need opportunity to drink water, mm -hmm. snacks or something. Mm -hmm. There will be opportunity, we shall probably get a lot of sanitizer. We shall probably get a lot of paper. Uh, we shall probably have some clips and paper. So the, within a district, there will be so there's staplers. There's so because there's going to be a lot of paper. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of photocopying. Mm -hmm. you, can have, you can make yourself ready to do some photocopying at each of those centers. Okay. You can also prepare to help people do pre-registration pre online. You can prepare, you know, have a good kiosk that respects privacy okay. and uh, prepare to do uh, for those who want to do online registration. All right. Um, the other question that has come out uh, over the 2014-2015 exercise is the gap in consideration of the diaspora population. They are Ugandans and would like to be recognized in this process and considered thereof. So as we are having this uh, mass renewal of the identity cards, what is the consideration for the diaspora population? In the last two years alone, we've registered about 4,000 people in diaspora. So diaspora has been on our agenda mm -hmm. actually not last two years in the last five or so years since that exercise but this exercise has an online online tool so they can capture their data online and then go into the embassies to capture their biometrics however i need to mention there is a complexity with diaspora registrants in one way not for all, but for many. When you acquire the citizenship of another country, in some countries they require you to denounce or renounce your citizenship as a Ugandan, mm. much as you have deep heritage and roots in Uganda. Mm -hmm. In such a scenario, you will be required to first acquire dual citizenship. You first acquire dual citizenship, then you come and also register for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, in your closing remarks, as we wind up this conversation, what's the continued commitment of NIRA uh, to ensure that Ugandans, by and large, actually have uh, that unique process well catered to, no, not even just to, through the new renewal time, mm. but when people lose these cards and uh, have to come for renewals here and there ever so often? We are an entity whose performance is currently impeded by our obsolete technology and understaffing. 
However, during this mass enrollment period, we are trying, we wish to take advantage of the numbers that will come together and of the upgrades in technology to improve service delivery. It is our mandate to create, maintain, and manage the National Identification Register. So we are committed to registering births, mm -hmm. registering deaths, allocating needs, and issuing na national IDs in the spaces and within the resources that we are allocated. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Rosemary Chisembo, who's thank the Executive you. Director with NERA. She's given you the commitment. And you have heard from the horse's mouth the process and the procedures and the requirements and as to why they are actually having uh, this renewed national exercise for identity cards. Now, again, it's not your need that expires, neither do you expire. It's just that in consideration of technological advancements, ever so often you're required to improve the technology of the security that you do have as a Ugandan. That marks the end of this conversation. We're going to be taking a short breather. When we return, we're going to be looking into the sports, the sports uh, sector as far as uh, developments are concerned. Uh, in the dailies today, they speak of some new hopefuls as far as infrastructure is concerned for sports. Uh, but the bigger question is how do we reshape ourselves to be uh, a, a player, uh, not just a player, but a leading player within the East African region. We do have uh, members from FUFA who are here to give us that debate.